You're listening to Atlanta Baseball Talk, your weekly podcast for all things Atlanta Braves. Welcome to show number 292. Today is Saturday, April 4th, 2015, and my name is Steve. No hammy tonight, but I am joined by Curtis. And Kurt, we need to start by announcing that tonight's show is sponsored by Front Row Seats, our first ever sponsor. We're very Woo-hoo! happy to have them on board. I know, I know. So everybody that you're, that's listening, please help treat them right by getting the best Braves tickets at the best price online, guaranteed. Please use discount code ABT, as in Atlanta Baseball Talk, ABT, at the checkout page, and you won't pay any service fees on the tickets. Visit FrontRowSeatsLLC.com or download the mobile app today. Again, FrontRowSeatsLLC.com. All right, Kurt, in tonight's show, we'll discuss our 2015 Braves and our MLB predictions. We'll kick off another year of Shot in the Dark. And we'll look to the week ahead. But first, a lot more activity, Kurt, than I would have expected this uh, last week, particularly with the trade for Arizona Diamondbacks starting pitcher Trevor Cahill. So, Kurt, the Braves are on the hook for $5.5 million of his $12 million salary as the D-backs included cash in the deal. And Cahill has been named the fifth starter in the rotation. We'll get to the fourth starter in a minute. So, Kurt, what do you think of this deal? Um, it's, it's genius. If it works out, it's another one of these, uh, that the Braves clearly think that they, um, have people in place that can help these guys figure out what has befallen their careers. And Trevor Cahill has fallen off a cliff, uh, since his best season, he went 18 and eight in 2010. And since then it's been lots more losing than winning. Um, and last year he went three and 12. So, um, I, I wouldn't say that you're buying cheap, but they gave up nothing, um, uh, an outfield prospect. And so they're hoping that, uh, Again, Roger McDowell can work his magic on a sinker ball pitcher. So um, they, the guy I saw in an interview with him with DOB that he said he couldn't figure out an arm slot last year, and so that's what they've worked on. But, I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's a shot in the dark, which the Braves are kind of interested in doing right now, and why not, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of an interesting move in that it's, it's another one of these, well, we're half pregnant moves by the front office. In the, we're totally rebuilding, except for Nick Markakis and now Trevor Cahill. You know, it's kind of weird in that way. But for a a 2010 All-Star and a starting pitcher when you clearly didn't feel comfortable throwing out Wandy Rodriguez followed by Eric Stoltz, who are basically the same pitcher, it's pretty cheap, right, at $5.5 million. And this is, no front office guy would say this is the math, but... You know, they released Wandy Rodriguez the day after, who was going to get paid $2 million if he was on the opening day roster. So in a way, you could squint your eyes and say it's even cheaper than the five and a half. You know, and if if Roger, like you said, really can turn him around... And he, you know, he regains his form. He's there's a there's a thirteen million dollar option for 2016. Like if he's really at the end of this a three or a two, you know, it's money that you would consider paying for this guy to, you know, as you're really closer to 2017 and less in rebuilding and more starting to go for it next year. So. It'll be interesting, you know, it'll be interesting to watch this guy and see what he can do. I mean, the rotation is certainly more interesting to watch as a fan this year than it would have been Wandy and Eric Stoltz at the end. Sure, yeah, and obviously there's, those guys are, you're not getting any different than what they are. Uh, This guy still, I'm assuming, could potentially return. I mean, it it has been a while. Um, and the numbers since 2010, 12 and 14 with a 416, 13 and 12 with a 378, 8 and 10 with a 399, 3 and 12 with a 561. I mean, he's clearly not getting any better. And so you look at 18 and 8 as almost, well, I mean, it's not even almost, it is complete anomaly in his career. So are we hoping that he's a 13 and 12, 378 pitcher um, as yes. a fifth starter? Yes, the then, yes, yeah, sure. Of course. <laughs> absolutely. 
All right, so Kurt, staying with the starting rotation, as we mentioned earlier, Wanda Rodriguez, Wandy Rodriguez released after the Cahill trade, which left Fulte, Stoltz, and Cody Martin as the candidates to fill the fourth slot because they had named um, Cahill as the fifth starter after he arrived. So we're recording this Saturday night. None of this has been really officially announced. We do know that Fulte was sent down to AAA today. And the all, you know, all, everything that beat writers are reporting is that Cody Martin is the long man out of the pen. So Eric Stoltz is your fourth starter and your home opening starter, by the way. Um, <laughs> so, Kurt, you know, Fulte to AAA was the only sensible move. Absolutely. Like, right. This guy may be great and maybe that's going to be soon, but it ain't now. He was really inconsistent, had command problems. Uh, you know, I mean, I, it would really be fantastic if this guy was a mainstay of the rotation next year, but he, he, he needs to start every day and not be the long man out of the pen. I don't know why that was, if that was even really considered, it just made no sense to me. And Wandy Rodriguez was amazing for the first half of the spring. He started to lose some of that dominance. Stoltz has been good to very good, really consistently throughout the spring, including today. He went five innings, one run. You know, happy for that Cody Martin made the, the big club after his spot start for, for Mike Miner and just really catching everybody by surprise. So, I don't know, Kurt, any heartburn with Stoltz over Cody Martin? No, and I, I guess the only thing that with all this is is where is Mike Miner and what to what extent is he injured? How long is he going to be out? Is is this signing of of Cahill something or trading for Cahill something bigger? Are they concerned more about that this is a long term thing for him? But yeah, beyond that, it it is what it is. And I bet, frankly. They don't know much more than we do about Miner. You know, uh, we're sitting here going, who knows about Miner? And, and it's really the same for them. You know, they're seeing him throw. There's been no reports about new pain or that kind of things. I mean, they're interviewing those guys. It's kind of hard to hide that stuff. But there is no real good reason to count on Mike Miner this year, especially after an off season of rest and then, you know, two, you know a, a week in he gets hurt again. So I think it's just being practical is my guess. Sure. All right. So Curtis, for the rest of the roster, the last two outfield spots went to Kelly Johnson, not a big surprise and not Joe Benson as the beat writers had been uh, writing about for like the last week and a half, but went to Pedro Siriaco who can play both infield and outfield. And he hit a ton this spring, led the team in RBI, had a high average, stole some bases, you know, my concern about him is everything I read is that he can really hit fastballs and really not hit breaking balls. So, you know, I was talking to our buddy Kenneth about Syriaco. Kenneth's a big Red Sox fan. Syriaco spent some time on the Red Sox last year, and he said that he'd be really good for stretches and then really disappear for stretches. So Kelly Johnson and, and Syriaco round out the outfield bench. Any thoughts there? No. I mean that 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 seems to sum up the re- Atlanta Braves of recent memory. Really yeah. hot for a little while and really disappear for a little while. <laughs> you know, and the Kelly Johnson story is very nice. I love Kelly Johnson. We loved him when he was here. But God, the guy has not hit in the last three seasons. I mean, batting averages in the low two hundreds. Yeah, and, and on I, base I, percentage like high twos, low threes. So okay. And, yeah, and you know, you want obviously the best output from these guys, but I'd be shocked if either one of these guys, I'm sorry, if if they're batting over 230. Yeah, and and you're you're getting them more for their defense and their versatility than their bats, but you know, the the bench has been pretty ugly the last couple of years. It'd be nice to if it was a little stronger. Um so for the rest of the bench, we've got Kayaspo and Goslin. Really no big surprises there. I mean, Kayaspo was signed to like a $4 million deal, I believe, to be the starting second baseman until Peraza was ready. Now, of course, um, Peterson's come on the scene, which has sort of changed things for Kayaspo, but you know, you knew Kayaspo was going to make it. Gotham's been here before, gives you versatility, can, is by all accounts will be the backup center fielder before um, Melvin comes back. So... 
Moving on to the bullpen, the last remaining spots went to um, McKeerahan, who they picked up earlier this week after they dropped James Russell. So he's the other lefty in the pen with Avilan, who, again, no surprise there. He was the only lefty really left. Um, Juan Jamie, who's really here because he's out of options, and then Cody Martin is your long man. So, Kurt, the bullpen's kind of worrisome <laughs> to me. I, you know, it's it's great that Grilly and Johnson look terrific this spring. Avilon had some really good moments, had some not so good moments, and Avilon was really undependable last year. I mean, kind of terrible. Uh, Jamie hasn't looked good at all this spring. You don't know what you're going to get out of McKeerahan. I mean, there could be some real black holes in the bullpen. Yeah, it's going to be that you hope that the starters can last. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that whole middle section is going to be sketchy. It really is. All right, Kurt, let's move on to our predictions for 2015. But first, a quick word from Front Row Seats. Everybody, don't forget to get the best deals on Braves tickets online. Visit frontrowseatsllc.com and use discount code ABT, and you won't be charged any service fees. Again, that's frontrowseatsllc.com. All right, so Kurt, our predictions for the 2015 Braves. We'll get to some MLB postseason stuff in a minute. But let's start here. So over under Andrelton Simmons batting average, 248. I have over a big bounce back, 269. Yeah, I have over two. I'm thinking close to 270 as well. I just, I believe it. I'm believing all the hype. It was great to hear DOB talk about him last week and say that he looks much, much better at the plate. The numbers certainly bear that out. I'm all in on Andrelton Simmons this season. And maybe not having to force him into a slot in the batting, uh, batting order lineup, the lineup that, uh, yeah, order that won't suit him. Yeah, exactly. Well, because there's so many natural places for all the guys to go this year, it'll be easy to slot him in where he should be. Yep. Um, okay, over under Chris Johnson's batting average, 275. And total opposite, not buying it at all. Uh, under about 257 is what I have. Yeah, me too. And uh, I have 243. And part of it is that I kind of hate Chris Johnson now. Last year was so awful. And all the petulant you know, tantrums in the dugout. I just hate it. He seems like a tool. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I don't... What, what number did I just say? 243, um, yeah, something 243. like that. Yeah, so I, I think way under for Chris Johnson. Tons of strikeouts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, so which reliever, new to the bullpen this year, ends the year with a better ERA, Grilly or Johnson? I'm going with Johnson. Any good reason? No, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going with Grilly. They both had great springs. I mean, God, it would just be terrific if they were even, you know, 75% of their former selves. I saw Grilly in one of the um in in one of the games it was either online or uh, on TV and, you know, so he looked good. Uh, I'm I'm all in on Grilly. All right, Kurt, which starting pitcher ends the year with the best ERA? I'm going with Wood, just over 3, 3.12. Yeah, don't you think that Wood's just going to kill it this year? I do. And then for some reason, I'm kind of losing faith in Tehran, and I have no idea why. But Because I, of his last start. Nah, right? probably, I'm sure. You know, because that's the way life is. That you always, it's the last thing in your mind that you remember the most. Um, but yeah, I just, I like Wood. I like his makeup. I like his demeanor. I mean, I, I just, you know, as long as that herky-jerky rotation doesn't, um, the motion doesn't, cause something to explode inside his body that uh yeah i'm 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 big on alex wood yeah and it was exciting you know for me to start to sort of hedge my bets a little last week when we were talking to dob and he wouldn't hear anything about it. he's like no alex wood's the real deal no fall off he's gonna kill it you know so that is good news but i'm gonna go with shelby miller i think shelby miller is just going to exceed all expectations this year i'll go with a 3.02 with shelby wow. miller that is out of left field. I, I was, I, he hadn't even registered for me. He's looked real good this spring, Kurt. Yeah, 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 sure. All right, over under on Melvin's games started this year, 70. I'm going right under, which is amazingly bad, but 68 is what I've got. And that's because I don't think he's going to be any good and they're going to bench him. Mainly. Yeah. 
Well, the, and, and that's me too. I mean, I have under as well, right? So he's going to, let's say he doesn't come back to the big club till middle of May. All right. So that's, we'll call that 35 games. Um, so there's, you know, 130, 128 left. God, that math is real bad. But um, I just don't think, I think he lasts about another month and a half or two. And they see that they give him, you know, one or two starts a week after that. And EY Jr. and, you know, probably by that time, Malik Smith or something. I, I just don't believe that EY Jr. is going to be our starting center fielder for most of the year either. Um, I just don't I just don't see it with Melvin. It'd be great if we were wrong. All right, over under on Braves wins against the Nats. So of course, division opponent opponent will play them 19 times this year. Over under eight. Six. Yeah, I had seven. You know, the Nats are gonna be pretty good. <laughs> I don't I just <laughs> And that rotation is gonna be pretty difficult. Yeah. And 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 the end of the year. The mojo was gone. Yeah. Oh, boy. Right. They, flip, they flipped the script. So, Right. Really, we need the sweep the first series and get back in their head storyline and beyond that. I mean, no there's not much to hang your hat on. Yeah. Okay. Over under on Jason Hayward's home runs this year. <laughs> this is the worst one of them all. <laughs> 18. Yeah. Over 22. Yeah, I had 21. It's funny. Uh, yeah, but over. There's just, there's just no doubt he's going to have a great season. I just I I can't believe anything else. How how far will your projectile vomit go when he wins the MVP? <laughs> oh God! Now see, I hadn't even taken it to that length. Could you imagine? You know the the Cardinals win the the NL pennant. Hayward or the World M- Series MVP? <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. It is their year. I mean, we flip flop Giants Cardinals yeah, every single that's year. True. It's so. their turn. Yeah, there, there can only be two. Yep. Um, all right, over under on Braves wins this year, seventy seven. Well, after your interview with DOB, I've 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 it really kind of energized me and I've felt better about the team, but I'm gonna push on seventy seven. That's that's where I'm going. I can't see them winning many more games than that. Um, but I I, I I think they're gonna be better than a lot of people. They are not, as Buster Olney put it, the second worst team in baseball. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm more in line with uh, SI, who said they were the sixth worth team in baseball. So I'm going to push with 77. Yeah, I'm going 79. There seems some good symmetry in them winning the same number of games as the as last year's team did, given that they, you know, three of the four best offensive guys walked out the door, all that stuff. It'll be interesting, and I just think that's how it plays out, that they win the same number. All right, so Curtis, um, let's predict, the postseason. So MLB division winners and wild card winners. Let's start with the National League. What do you got? Uh, Nats, obviously. Uh, St. Louis winning the Central. LA winning the West. My wild card teams are Florida, San Diego. Okay. Um, I'll do. I'll do the National League now as well. So I've got the Nats, the Pirates, the Dodgers. Wild card, San Diego, and St. Louis. All right, how about the AL for you? So not buying into the Marlins hype, huh? Not buying into the Marlins hype, no. Okay. Not, uh, not with Jose Fernandez coming back in July. You know, if he was starting the season with them, I think that changes a lot. But Sure. Yeah. Revamp lineup. I know, I know. Uh, Martin Prado. Yes. <laughs> hey. Uh, AL, Boston, Detroit, Anaheim. Wild card, Baltimore, Seattle. All right. So I've got Orioles, White Sox, Mariners. Uh, wild card, Red Sox, and um, Anaheim. LA. So lots of the same teams. Just lots of the same teams, different, different order. positions. Look at yeah. you with the White Sox love. Look, you can't, you can't, you know, you can't vote against uh, Jeff Samarja. It's true. When you, you can't spell uh, AL Central Division champion without Samarja. <laughs> all right. So who meets in the World Series and who takes it all, Kurt? Uh, Los Dodgers over Los Mariners. That's Dodgers. exactly what? my pick. That's exactly what I have, Kurt. Dodgers over Seattle. That's what I've got. All right. We will, uh, 
we, we, you know, we, we need to get Hammy's picks too. We'll yes. Announce them. We'll announce them next week. All right, folks, our last word of the night from front row seats. Don't forget to bet, get the best deals on Braves tickets online. Visit frontrowseatsllc.com. Use discount code ABT and you won't be charged any service fees. Again, that's frontrowseatsllc.com. All right, so Kurt, it's back to shot in the dark, our crazy prediction for the coming week. And um, please, everybody, send in your predictions as well on Twitter, on Facebook. Do hashtag um, ABT shot in the dark. No, what did no, we do? No, a- it's ABT SITD, a- yeah. right? Yeah, you're well, never getting ABT shot in the dark. You'll I know. Out of, All right. Run out of characters. So on Twitter, ABT SITD. So send them in this week as well. Uh, before first pitch on Monday. All right. Yes, so and at, at Meg Lapore, you need to get yours in quick because we have to. Because we have to use yours like use 50 yours every, times this yep. this season. So, yeah. All right, Kerr, what do you got this week? I have, which I think will set a theme for this coming season for the Braves. Um, the Braves starters are going to give up two runs or less in the six games this week, but the Braves are going to go two and four. All right. Say that one again. That the Brave starters will give up two earned runs or less in each of the games this week, but they will only win two games. All right, so it's not even an average across the six games. They're literally going to give up two or less each each game. Yeah, I mean, wow. I, saw, I had 12 runs down, but I know you like to ridicule Ham and I whenever we throw anything out there, so... <laughs> well, Kurt, I think you're starting strong this week, this season. I got to tell you, I like that. All right. Um, I'm going Simmons is going to bat over 600 this week. Which Simmons? Sorry, Andrelton. Ted Simmons? Yeah. (laughs) All right. So speaking of the week ahead, uh, we open the season in Florida against the Marlins. So three. You're going to be at a game. And I am going to be at a game. I will be at game three, Miller versus Kohler. Very excited to see Shelby Miller in his first start. You're very excited to see the huge thing in the center field i am i'm excited about all of it i'll I'll admit and then at home uh for three against the mets so that's going to be tehran alvarez wood latos miller kohler god i Uh, totally forgot latos was on the yeah yeah the marlins marlins got latos so that's the marlins series and then in atlanta it will be stoltz like we said stoltz gets the home opener as we all envisioned stoltz niece (laughs) tehran g and then Wood Cologne. Bartolo Cologne is the Mets' opening day starter. Did you know? Seriously. Had you seen that? No, yeah. I had. Cologne is the opening day starter, wow. which was great. There was some great. Uh, someone tweeted some really great, you know, back page New York Papers stuff on it, and it was not very flattering, as you can yes. imagine. Um, as his, much like his physique. Yeah. So as, as you notice, you know, no Trevor Cahill. There, Cahill's not going to get a start till mid-April because of. Because of the off days, they don't need a fifth starter for the first couple of weeks, so we won't see Cahill for. And because he went three and twelve last year, well, there's that too. Um, all right, so your prediction for the week is two and four. Two and four. I'm going five and one. Now I know, I know, I know. I predicted seventy nine games and everything for the season. <laughs> I just think that I think they're going to start really strong out of the gate and get people really crazy. God bless you. <laughs> Five and one, Kurt. You are good. You are at a. Lo- you're already at a thousand hope meter. <laughs> they're going to lose one in Florida and sweep the Mets. And he, Come it, on, it, does that seem completely out of the realm of possibility? Yes. Okay. Okay. Who Who are they beating? I mean, sorry. Who Who Who's beating them? Um. Yeah. I don't know. They're going to lose to. Uh, they're going to lose the home opener, and then they're going to win the next two. So no, already no faith in Eric Stoltz. Wow, that's no, no, no. I'm sorry. They're going to lose the Marlins home opener. Ah, They're sweeping gotcha. in Atlanta. Oh, okay. I yeah. see. So, Kurt, I mean, I guess we talked about it a little bit. So, last thing here, you, after the DOB interview, after seeing all the spring training play out, there are no more games in spring training. Do do you feel better about the team? Um, I guess I'm buying into. Uh, just their demeanor, um, if that's if that's the best I can think of it as. Um, yeah, I mean, neither I, I mean, of us think they're going to break eighty games, so there's yeah. that. I mean, there's there is definitely something to just being positive, and I I, I mean that's very trite, but it, I, I I like the energy, um, and 
I, I, the team clearly quit last year. I mean, I just, I I don't think that there's any getting around that. And um, so it, they will be infinitely more rootable. Maybe they'll lose a lot more games, but there were times last year where they, it was depressing watching the Braves play because it was the same old thing time and time again. I mean, you could almost, it was a running joke. Um, no, it, it was a miserable brand of baseball. There's no yeah. doubt. Kurt, if you had to pick one guy that you're most interested to watch this year on the Braves, who would it be? I'm going to go with Nick Markakis. Yeah. Yeah. And he'll be a key to, a, you know, he could be the key to success this year if he really, you know, has a good season. Yeah. I mean, Johnny Gomes obviously is going to be a big presence, but I don't know what his presence on the field will be. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, like you said, Marquecas is going to be such an integral part of this whole thing. And I mean, I, I guess, uh, you know, beyond the guys that we've watched for a few years now, I, I think his, 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 interjection into this process i think will be very interesting yeah and and for me i'm gonna go with jace peterson i just yeah, it would be sure. great if this guy is the real deal and yeah. let's see him force a move uh, you know of his to third base next year so peraza can still come up i mean it would be really terrific if he has a great season well and and to have another position player uh, that you know really high level position player that's what the braves need i mean they they need to start bringing up some position players that really make their mark for us in the major league level. So, And speaking of Jace Peterson, a reminder of the bet that Hammy and I have about the opening day batting order. I said that Jace Peterson would be in eighth, that would, would, would be in the eighth spot and Hammy gets all the other spots in the lineup. I think you're going to lose. I know he's been in the second spot so much the last couple of weeks. Yeah. I just, but I still can't. It'd be so many... If EY Jr.'s really one and Freddie's really three, it's three lefties in a row. You know, it's really my only hope. But I'll be watching that batting yeah. lineup well, pretty closely Monday. Uh, yeah, Monday yeah. morning. I mean, you really, if you think about the way you would set it up, that would be logical. It would be uh, Young, Peterson, Marcakis, Freeman to me, but that's four lefties. So um, Right. And, and don't you think they're going to really try to get to keep Freeman in the four as much as possible. I, I mean, I, I think so. And I think he's the most logical four hitter you have on the team. Right? I just think it really could go EY, Simmons, um, Freddie, Chris Johnson in the four. And then, Ugh. yeah, I, but don't be surprised if Chris Johnson's the, the cleanup hitter Monday. All right. So, That's it, everybody. Um, Happy almost opening day. And that is the show. So make sure you have us in your RSS feeds or subscriptions on iTunes or Stitcher so that you don't miss any of our weekly shows. And as always, check us out at AtlantaBaseballTalk.com for past shows, to check out our blogs, and to post in our comment section. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at ATL Baseball Talk and to like us on Facebook. Thanks again for listening, everyone, and go Braves! Thanks for listening to Atlanta Baseball Talk, your weekly podcast for all things Atlanta Braves. To find new shows, to post in our forum, or to send a comment, please visit us at atlantabaseballtalk.com. Had to admit the problem.